Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for checking out another one of my videos. And if you are new here, welcome to the channel. Today we are taking on what is probably the most ambitious project of my channel here, and that is we are going to redo our daughter's bathroom. Our house was built in 1996, and so pretty much everything in here is from that time period. It's in decent enough shape, but it is dated. Uh, everything is pretty bland and white, uh, or off-white rather, and uh, builder grade, and so we're going to try to update most of it. I'm not going to go too overboard here. We're going to leave the tub and shower surround in place. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but the vanity, the tile, the toilet, uh, the paint, and all of the hardware and fixtures is all going to be updated. I took Friday off of work, so we're going to attempt to get this done in a three-day weekend, so wish me luck. I started by taking the toilet out, and whoever installed this thing must have used uh, the biggest wax ring ever because there was a ton of wax under there that I had to contend with. I put on some gloves and got a plastic spackling knife and kind of dug it all out of there and came across a couple of metal brackets that were actually around uh, the toilet ring and I found out later that it's got a little crack in it. Um, so I'm gonna have to fix that later, but got this all cleared out and put some um, paper towel in there while doing the rest of the project so the fumes and everything stay inside. After that, I scored around the vanity top and then used my oscillating tool to uh, cut around the drain and everything below so the vanity would come out uh, nicely. This tool is super handy to have around. I'm not sure how I would have done this otherwise. With that all done, I used my demo chisel to get the side splash off. And I was careful here not to destroy too much of the drywall. The new vanity is going to come up right about to the top of where that backsplash is. And so all this should be covered, um, but I still wanted to be careful taking it out. I was able to list this for free on Facebook Marketplace and give it to somebody so it did not end up in the waste stream and I was happy about that. And check this out, the previous tile installer, my goodness, what a, a nice person for only putting that baseboard on there uh, with just a couple of sticks of mastic. So this tile was laid pretty well. I used a hammer and chisel and a crowbar and a, a tile chisel there you can see and it came out pretty easily. The Duroc was laid down with nails instead of screws and so I bashed it all apart and um, got it all out. All right, this is by far the worst part of the project, and this is the hardy backer. This was a total pain. I've l since learned uh, that this stuff cuts way better if you do it outside with like a jigsaw with a diamond blade. Um, I bought the carbide tipped knife that they recommend and just made a complete mess of things. I'm using a pair of channel locks here to try to chip away at this line. Um, it does not uh, clean break where you score those lines, and you can see I cut off or broke off rather, a huge chunk of it to the right there. And then to do the drain, again, following the um, processes that they had on their website, and it was still just a, a total pain. And so I'm doing my best here, um, but this was uh, a really annoying part of the project, but we were able to get it done. I did jump over later to my oscillating tool. That worked better, but still dulled blades super quick and was not ideal. To adhere to the subfloor, I'm using this porcelain tile mortar and um, just mixing it per the instructions. Uh, out in the garage. I've got a paddle mixer, mixer here that um, gets it to the consistency of about peanut butter, maybe a little bit thicker than peanut butter. Um, and I'm uh, going to bring this up and use this to get the hardy backer down onto, this, onto the uh, OSB subfloor. So I use a wet sponge to um, uh, dampen that up a little bit so it doesn't suck up all the moisture. And then I like to use, um, I'm not a professional tile installer, far from it, but I like to use a a small trowel first to kind of get it all spread out and then I come in with my um, quarter inch notch trowel and uh, and get that all um, spread out so then the uh, the hardy backer goes down on top of that and so um, I did the whole rest of the floor in that exact same uh, method you doing a little uh, time-lapse video here for you all and um, got that all laid down pretty easily um, and then use this uh, this backer on um, kind of coated uh, inch and a half or inch and a quarter maybe um, screws to adhere it to the floor. And I'm going uh, kind of eight to ten inches apart along the sides and then coming back and putting one um, in the middle to hold this uh, hold this all down. I think it said it's supposed to be about eight inches apart per screw. Um, for the seams, I am using this uh, mesh tape as well as some more uh, mortar to uh, hold that all down in place. And again, all these procedures I just picked up right from the Hardy Backer uh, website. I think I actually watched a video on YouTube to um, see exactly how they do it, and I'll link that below. All right, I'm squaring this up off of the tub, and so that's what I was just doing there, and um, went down and cut uh, with this cheap tile saw 
uh, a bunch of half tiles just so I could get started. I think I bought this tile saw like 12 years ago for 80 bucks and it has served me well. I've done a ton of projects with it, maybe changed the blade once. Um, so it's a really uh, uh, kind of a good investment if you're gonna do some tiling in your future. And so we're gonna use this uh, porcelain kind of marble lookalike tile. We're gonna put it down in a brick pattern. So that's why I've got the half tiles there for. And we're about five minutes into this video. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell button. Uh, give me a like, let me know in the comments below. All that stuff helps the YouTube algorithm. It helps my channel out a lot so I can keep making videos like this for you all to watch. I'm not going into a ton of detail here on how to tile because there's so many better videos out there than I could do on how to do that. Um, but basically just using an eighth inch spacer and back buttering uh, each tile and um, laying it all down. This is a smart saker. Uh, gauge. Um, you can use this for a whole bunch of stuff. It's helpful in flooring. They actually sent this to me um, several months ago. I hadn't had a chance to use it yet, uh, but getting to use it here and found it to be pretty handy for a DIY uh, amateur like me. It was handy in getting these um, curves around the, the toilet flange and uh, some other parts. And so, um, okay, here is probably my favorite part of this build. So this is the threshold and this came in, uh, I bought this from Lowe's and you can see it had a double bevel and I cut the one bevel off. It's like a composite material, matches the tile really well. And by cutting that other bevel off, I can lay it down to get the exact measurements of these tiles as they come and meet the, um, the wood floor. To me, like getting this threshold right was a huge part in making this bathroom floor look professional. And so I've got everything laid out there with exactly how it's gonna look and all the tiles cut um, to the exact measurement. And then I was able to put a nice thick bed of mortar uh, and get that threshold in place. Um, and I believe this takes me over to the next day. All right, with the tile laid and it's the next day, let's turn over to the shower and tub surround. So I'm gonna try a completely new product here, have zero experience with it. Uh, and that is a protective coating uh, or epoxy coating around the tub surround. So I started by taking off all of the hardware and getting that out of the way and then uh, cutting out the caulking um, to get a nice fresh start. Again, this is a 25 year old house. So we've got a lot of paint and things like that um, that I wanted to get out of there to give this a nice clean line. So, okay, this is called Ecopel and you can buy it on Amazon. I got the two pack, the double kit because I'm doing a tub and a surround. And what's the best thing about this product is uh, that there is no fumes and you can use it pretty much after like 24 to 36 hours, they say. Um, so I use the instructions. I could probably make a whole video on exactly how to do this, but the company, which I'll link all below, uh, has that out there. And so you can reference all of that, but I just follow the instructions. This is a really thick consistency. It goes on really thick, almost like uh, like Elmer's glue or something like that. And um, just use the kit that they gave and went around and poured at the top and then you spread it around with this foam roller that they supply. It is not perfect. It does not give a perfectly smooth finish. There's probably a couple of things I could have done differently. Um, but uh, again, really happy with the way this turned out. You can see how much it's freshening up this look. The current surround is pretty dingy and kind of a yellowish cream color. And so this really freshened everything up. All right, from there, the tile's been down for about 24 hours now. So I came in with uh, grout. This is just a pre-mixed grout um, that I picked up from Lowe's. And so going ahead and uh, putting it all down using the small um, grout squeegee, uh, if you will, to kind of get it all in the cracks and squeeze it all in there and then using a sponge um, to wipe it all clean. Again, great videos out there on how to do this. I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail, um, but it was uh, pretty straightforward, especially for a small area like this. And here I am, nice close up of the uh, threshold and you can see how that looks. In hindsight, I should have taped off the floor, the wooden floor, because I had to do some cleanup with that afterwards. But regardless, it, um, it turned out great and uh, really happy with the professional look of that. All right, so this is the new vanity. This is uh, just something we picked up from Wayfair. It's pre-built. I did not have the time or energy to uh, make my own. Um, so this comes with the top, which is really nice. It didn't, it didn't fit perfectly square, so I dug out that corner a little bit so it can sit in there nicely. Um, picked up this faucet from uh, Lowe's and got that all installed. Uh, again, I could probably make a whole video on how to do all this stuff. We did end up buying a new toilet. The other one worked fine, but once we brought it in there, it was way too yellow and, uh, and dingy. So we got a new toilet um, and it's uh, much brighter and white. So everything's connected and the water is running and the toilet is flushing and uh, pretty happy about that. 
From there, I threw up some baseboards and shoe molding to complete the look of the floor, and this takes me into Sunday night, so just about got it done, but not quite. All right, so I worked a half day on Monday so I could finish this up. Um, had to get some new fixtures. This is an awesome little shower head we got. Um, new hardware for the uh, for the tub to update the look of it now that it's been brightened up. So I got a new faucet and a new drain, new shower head, uh, a new handle, and installed all of that. This, um, I was pretty proud of myself. I used a little channel lock um, to try to get that uh, drain out, and it worked well. And um, you can see in that previous uh, thing that I was doing some painting, and so I've got the uh, last coat of paint going on, or, or the first coat rather. Um, and this is kind of like a light gray, uh, again, just to freshen things up and clean things up. All right, that is about it. So this was about a $1,700 project um, between the vanity, the tile, the tub surround kit, and the new toilet, and some hardware fixtures. Everything went pretty smoothly. Um, you can see I did new outlet, new switches there, uh, all new hardware. Um, really to update the look of everything, nice clean caulking uh, around the vanity. And here is how the um, shower and tub surround looks. Again, this is, it's not perfect and you can't really tell on video. If you're in person, you can see some minor imperfections, but for our purposes and, uh, you know, as an alternative to ripping the entire thing out and starting fresh, we were really happy. I think the kit was about 250 or $280, something like that. I'll link it below. I'm really happy with the way that, it turned out and that is about it and so we so appreciate you all checking out this video let me know in the comments if you have any questions or how you think i did uh, and again hit the subscribe if you haven't already and uh, again thank you all so much for watching i really appreciate it and hope that this video will inspire you to do your builder grade bathroom and we'll see you all on the next video